Hello everyone. Today we continue our discussion of block ciphers. So far we discussed uh, some of block, some of the block ciphers in details, uh, but uh, all this time we focused on algorithms where the input is B bit and the output is B bit. So uh, we focused on the algorithm itself, but in daily use uh, we don't always uh, encrypt data that is of B bits. So we can sometimes encrypt very small data, like one or two bytes. And sometimes we can encrypt a huge file in our computer, which is gigabyte, uh, four or five gigabytes, for instance. So in daily life, we, we come across two questions and we will solve them uh, with mode of operations and also padding. So today's topic is mode of operations. I'm recording this video for my applied cryptology course, but mode of operations are the same for block ciphers, whether it is a lightweight cipher or not. So uh, these slides and the things I will talk about is also valid for lightweight ciphers. So I'm also recording it for my other course, lightweight cryptography for the internet of things. So let's start. Uh, when using block ciphers, the following two questions arise. Since a block cipher works on blocks, how to encrypt plain text longer than a single block? So this is the main problem because we rarely encrypt something that is of the block size. For instance, uh, think about AES, which is 16 bytes of a block, and uh, or think about present, which has a block size of 64 bits, which is eight bytes. But most of the time we encrypt uh, files or data which is longer than eight or 16 bytes. And if you think about files, we most of the time encrypt megabytes or gigabytes. So how do we encrypt these blocks in total and obtain the ciphertext? So we will answer this question with mode of operations. And the second question is how to encrypt a plain text whose length is not the multiple of the block size. So this is another problem. Uh, can be combined with the first one, but idea is as follows. If the block size is, for instance, eight bytes, if you think about present server, how can we encrypt seven bytes? So what should we do with the remaining one byte? So uh, we will uh, see why these questions are important, what will be our motivation, and then we will talk about our solutions to these problems. So let's start with the motivation to the question one. So question one was, uh, since a block cipher works on blocks, how to encrypt plain text longer than a single block? So assume that you have many blocks in this picture, M blocks, and you want to encrypt them with an encryption algorithm that you use. So easiest thing that comes to the mind is that encrypt every plain text block independently. Like here, use your secret key, encrypt the first block and obtain the first cipher text. Then encrypt the second plain text block with the same secret key, obtain the second cipher text block. And at the end, you have n ciphertext blocks. You can actually n plus one since we are counting, start counting from zero. So you can concatenate all of them and obtain the ciphertext. So this is the first thing that comes to our mind, but this is the uh, thing that you should never use. Okay, so it looks like a logical choice, but actually your system can be broken because of this. So you should never use this for cryptographic purposes. This uh, mode of operation, is actually referred to as electronic code book, which is ECB in short. And again, uh, although it appears in some of the standards, it is just for definition not to be used for cryptographic purposes. And why is this uh, precaution, why I'm uh, warning you about this? It is because ECB maps same plain text blocks to same ciphertext blocks attacker can capture information using the redundancy of the plain text. So idea is as follows. So assume that your P0 and P2 are the same. So you have two blocks that are the same. So if you encrypt these blocks with the same secret key, then C0 and C2 will be the same. So the redundancy in the plain text will cause a redundancy in the ciphertext, which can be exploited. So here's a very easy example to see why this is a huge problem. Uh, this problem actually arises when you're uh, most of easiest to see when you encrypt a BMP file. So this is a bitmap file. So think about it as a rectangle. So this is the logo of our university. 
So if you encrypt this image, this BMP file using AES encryption algorithm, but using the ECB mode of operation, this is the cipher text you would get. As you can see, we are using the uh, best block cipher we have so far, but after the encryption, just by looking at the cipher text, we can easily guess what the plain text was. We can even read the uh, Turkish abbreviation for na the name of our university. We can see the logo here and we can see the empty places here. Let's go back. This is the original logo and this is the encrypted version. So you might think why this is the case, because think about the pixels here. So there are a lot of white pixels that comes together in the same line. So a few pixels, most probably four pixels, just uh, keep uh, 128 bit data. So when you encrypt those four white pixels, you get the cipher text, which are different colored four pixels, but the next four pixels are the same. So your encrypted cipher text will be the, have the same pixels. So this is why you see the repetition here. It keeps repeating itself. So this is the main problem and the redundancy in the file can be seen in the uh, ciphertext. Of course, I have to warn you about one thing. When you encrypt a file, you are actually encrypting the whole file. So at the beginning of the BMP file, we have the information like that it is a BMP file. Actually, we are keeping the dimensions of the BMP file at the beginning of the file and so on. So if you encrypt there, even if you know that it is a BMP file, your operating system would not be able to show you this picture because when you you'll double click it, the beginning of the BMP file, file should also be encrypted. So the operating system cannot understand that it is a BMP file and it cannot know the dimensions of the picture. So you have to do it by hand. It is not hard to guess. And if you guess it in a wrong way, you will see some pattern and some diagonal lines. So you can, uh, by using a few trial and errors, you can obtain this picture. Another example is, a, uh, is the logo of our laboratory. This is a cyber defense and security laboratory in our department. As you can see, this picture, I deliberately chose a, a low quality picture, but you will see that the whites around here will be visible after you encrypt the file. You can even see the CIDES word here if you look closely, but you can also see that this was a logo and these are the empty places. So this is our motivation. Normally people use this example uh, in literature by using the uh, logo of Linux, but you have a penguin, but uh, I wanted to show it by using uh, our logo of university. So our motivation, let's summarize it. BMP files are good examples why ECB fails in practice. This problem is not limited to the BMP files. This is uh, something people uh, some most of the time miss, miss because uh, other files can also be identified by just looking at it if it is an image file. So you can treat an encrypted file as if it is an image file and look at the pattern of the pixels to discover the type of the original file. For instance, executable files can be identified from the ciphertext because operations like memory accesses provide a distinct pattern in the image file and so on and so forth. So you have to, actually you can even create your own library for this kind of file types and then just by looking at the ciphertext, you can discover the original type of the file. So ECB mode can be used for implementation verification or benchmarking but ECB mode should never be used for cryptographic purposes. This is uh, something you have to keep in your mind all the time. So what is our motivation now? Since this doesn't work, how can we get rid of it? So we can get rid of this by somehow linking plain text blocks to each other. An easiest example is the cipher blockchain in mode of operation, which is shortened as CBC. So when you encrypt one plain text block, and obtain the ciphertext block, take it and exhort it with the following plain text block and continue in this way. So you are creating a chain with the ciphertext. But here there are, uh, as you can see, the, this uh, changes the uh, behavior of the ECB mode. 
For instance, if P1 and P2 are the same, when you encrypt P1, you obtain C1, but you XOR C1 with P2. So P2 XOR C1 is no longer same with this part. So you obtain something else. So you get rid of the redundancy, but here you are losing something. You now lost the parallelizability. So in order to encrypt P2, you have to know the value of C1. So in order to know the C1, you should have already encrypted P1. And in order to encrypt P1, you should know C0. So this is a serialized way of encryption. So mode of operations have advantages and disadvantages. So at the end of this lecture, we will see many mode of operations that we use in practice and see what are the advantages and disadvantages. So this was our motivation for our first question. Now let's move on to the second question and why this is important. So our motivation is as follows. If a plain text is not a multiple of block size B, we can fill the remaining bits with zero. So this is the first thing that comes into our mind. We can just fill the remaining bits with zero. But the problem is that this causes an ambiguity. The last bits of zero of the last block may belong to the plain text, or some of them may be from the bad padding. So you cannot be sure which is uh, the case when you are decrypting the file. For instance, look at this. Uh, consider the 64 bits block. I just wrote a random block here in hexadecimal notation. So I left the last byte as zero. Okay, when I encrypt it and send it to you, you will decrypt it and obtain the same thing. But now you will you will look at the last byte, and you will think uh, you would not you wouldn't be sure if this zero byte is coming from the original message or if it is from the padding. So uh, this is the main problem. Uh, we have to find a way to remove this ambiguity. And uh, with the padding, we will uh, talk about what can we do and how we can get rid of this ambiguity.